Hi everybody, how are you doing? This is Brad Doug. Got another video here for you. This is a really cool flip it on its dime kind of reinvent a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit, on how you can pair set RAID 1 SSD SATA. Now that's a complicated term I just said. Let's simplify it, shall we? Basically, how do you break the rule of 2.5 inch disc, do RAID 1, and fit in a in an area, all of it in less than the space of this basic 2.5 inch area. In other words, smaller format. So, and still be able to do RAID 1. Pairing for, let's say, I don't know, maybe a uh, TrueNAS platform, something like that. Anyways, so the reason why I'm bringing this up for you is because, in a nutshell, my old Isilon 5300 OEM Super Micro chassis which houses a whole bunch of hard drives, as you can see here, it has a very neat little secret inside of it that nobody knew about. Now, considering this has hard drives underneath it in the back and in the front, there's really no space for what's called a redundant, do uh, redundant boot model pairing, unless you use some of the discs in the tray. Well, somebody thought really intelligent about it, but these bridging cables to accomplish this and I looked at that and said you know what no that's not good how and what could be done to make this better and I will show you because it's a pretty cool trick I think it's really cool and I thought you would get a kick out of it as well so let me show you okay first it starts off with something like this isn't this cool it's got a simple uh, power input set right there see it right there that's going off to a Molex bridge and that Molex connection will provide power and connectivity for this unit. But the neat thing about this is this is mountable anywhere. It's on a metal frame. It has a bridging connection here, but it's not compatible. Because the units themselves are too big. See? They go too big. I mean, they don't fit. They're just too large. You can't get them to fit correctly and it to do what needs to be done. Plus, if you look at it, if you had it sent this way, it would break off real easy, right? Well, this is a problem. So what do we do? This little guy is basically a telephone set systems SATA to bridge connection for pairing for RAID 1s. So basically you run two SATA cables to here from your controller, maybe a, a SATA SATA or a SAS SATA. Um, and this allows you to be able to provide power and data pathway so that you can figure out how to do your going, how you're going to do your SATA bridging. Now this is SSD, not spinning hard disk. Do not put spinning hard disks on this kind of a footprint, and I'll show you why. Here we have a 2.5 inch SSD drive, right? What's wrong with it? It doesn't fit. See? It's not a good fit. It doesn't work. But, what if we did this instead? What if we went in and we took the cover off, and here's the cover right here took the cover off of the SSD drive and we discovered, oh my lord, the SSD drive itself is much smaller. So this is 128 gigs, but this could also be a terabyte. It's about the same size for both of them. And I can easily fit that on there. And if I take two of these 128 gig guys, look at that. Isn't that cool? See how that works? Isn't that wild? And look how small it is compared to a 2.5 inch, right? So with that being said, I have built a very tiny, fully RAID redundant pairing, and that's all I have. Now imagine if I had a set of these, or more. My disk capacity may be terabyte size or smaller for each slot. This right here could represent literally eight terabytes, if you look at it correctly, in SSD format. So if we had a spinning hard drive like this, obviously it won't work. And the reason why it won't work is because the drive state actually buffles up against the actual SATA bridge connection. So that means you'll never get a solid connection. And you can't do an extension because then you're building a disk array and blah, 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 blah. Again, rinse and repeat, it doesn't work. But look how tiny this is. Look at that. That is just too stupid. Now, warning. When I pop the lid off of this, right here, and I pop that off, that meant this is void. That's okay. You know why? Because 
in the sense of greater things, 128 gigs only cost me like $10, I can do that. And of course, keep the case in case you want to put it back inside and use it for future needs. But the point is, the 2.5 inch fitter is designed for fitting 2.5 inch ca ca uh, caddies like, you know, as such right here. These caddies are 2.5s and therefore the 740 chassis. But you put these guys in and this is how you can get your SATA drive successfully and stably put into whatever you're going to put it into. But if you instead go the route of this way, you can literally create yourself quite a, a pretty awesome uh, disc capacity on such a small footprint that you would not have a problem with being able to do anything you want to do with it. Now, this is this is 6 gig, so it's got plenty of bandwidth in, it, in its capacity and is functional. And I do understand there are going to be some more that are coming out that are even in the higher data range with a better quality contacts on site. But with that being said, this is a way for you to be able to cheat. I got these on eBay. Uh, they are OEM surplus for the micro, uh, super micro OEM chassis 5300 series and or the Isilon series for uh, 4700s that EMC made before they were uh, out there. So if you can find yourself some old Isilon chassis that have got the, um, let's see, 52, 54 disc setups, you can plunder these out of them, and uh, that's, that way you can get their hands on them. But do what I did. I just, I liked them so much, I bought more of them on eBay, so I could use them for other implementations and extraordinarily small data models. So with that being said, the goal here is to be able to show you that um, you really can, you know, twist things a little this way and a little that way. And it allows you to be able to reinvent the technology that some people just say, hey, by the way, we don't use this anymore. And we're trying to get rid of it on eBay. And you, they don't realize what they got till it's too late. And the end result was quite stupendous because when they finally realized what they had, you've already bought it and you've made your own storage capacity. So with that being said, uh, I think there's a new industry standard for SATA bridge cards. And remember what a SATA bridge card is, the actual true SSD SATA uh, bridge card that would that houses the RAM on the top, and this is the bridge section and the controller and the interface. So with that being said, I, I think that uh, maybe somebody can create something that's pretty impressive that can allow these tiny little cards to do what you want them to do. But with that being said, uh, this is Brad Dyke. I hope you guys keep having fun, keep learning, keep adjusting you know, things so that you can get them to be where they are and where you want them to be. And please continue to have fun doing it because that's the whole point. This is Brad Dyke signing off and God bless and have a great week.